Hey, welcome back knitters. I'm Jana with Pearl Together. This week we're going to carry on with our long-term knit along of Nora's Vintage Afghan. We've been knitting one block a month for the last year so far. Normally this would be block 13, but I found block 13 to be super simple. I mean, it's dead easy. If you've been following along so far, or if you can just make a regular four over four cable, you'll have no problem at all with block 13. So I didn't really feel like block 13 was worth a whole entire video all on its own. So I've combined this month's offering block 13 and block 14 together. And then we will go ahead and skip March. Um, that'll allow you to catch up a little bit with block 13 and 14. But then I also have another project that I'm working on that you'll find out about later. So if you haven't watched the setup video yet, do that. I'll put the link down below. You'll wanna make sure you have the most updated version of the pattern. Again, the link will be down below. The other thing I want to do real quick is give a shout out to all of my patrons. I certainly appreciate your support, your ongoing support over these last, the last year. I just had my one year anniversary of beginning my Patreon account and I so appreciate all of your support. So thanks so much for that. If you're interested in becoming a patron and helping to support these videos coming to you each and every week, go over to www.patreon.com forward slash pearl together to see what benefits I'm offering for your pledge of just a few dollars a month. All right, let's get started. Okay, on block 14, we're starting out in the same way we have all the other previous blocks by knitting these first four rows of garter. And then row five is the alternating knits and pearls for a little added texture. And then rows six through nine are also garter stitch. So now, if you look at our instructions for chart 14, we're going to do our increase row, where we're gonna increase from 59 stitches that we cast on up to 88 stitches. Okay, I'll show you how I go about doing the increases. So the instructions tell us to knit one, make one. So when I make one, as with the previous blocks, I'm just gonna lift that bar in between and I'm gonna go in, knit into the back of that stitch to twist it. Now these needles are using are not quite as sharp as the ones I usually use, but I'm just gonna go into the back of that stitch and knit into it. So it creates a little bit of a twist and helps mitigate or close any hole that might result. Then I'm gonna knit two and make one. Again, lift up the bar from the front to the back. And if you have trouble going to, into the back of that stitch, you can just kind of roll your needles around one another like that to help get that needle into the back part of that loop. Okay, so you're gonna knit two, make one 28 times, or in my case, I'm just gonna keep doing it until I have only two stitches left and then I'll knit two and I should have a total of 88 when I'm done. All right, I finished the increase row and I do in fact have 88 stitches. I have double counted to make sure that that's correct. Now normally this where we begin our cast on the tail end would normally indicate the right side or row one. That's not gonna be the case here. If you'll notice on chart 14, we are going to begin on the wrong side. The wrong side of our work will be row one. So take a look at your chart notes here. On the right side, begin at A and you're gonna knit across to a C, go back to B and you're gonna repeat what's in between the red lines, however many times indicated, and then you're going to finish off going this direction. On row one, we're gonna, these dots will be knit, not pearls. It's reversed on the wrong side and you're gonna knit across this way, repeat what's in between the red lines and then finish at A. So just make sure you review the chart notes and do exactly what it tells you to. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit through row one. That's pretty simple. We're just knits and pearls all the way across. And then I'll begin by showing you what these symbol, red and blue and other color symbols mean. Now this chart looks a lot more complicated than it is. It's just that they're showing you each different cable maneuver that's gonna to move to the right, this one's gonna to move to the left. And if you've been following along with our blocks, what you already know is that these red ones, for example, are gonna be worked over three, the course of three stitches and will contain a purl stitch. You can tell that by the little dot that's right there. And then the blue ones, will not have a purl stitch. They're just worked over the course of three stitches and it's a cable that moves to the left. So we'll get into that in just a moment. Okay, I'm beginning row two and if you look at the pattern, you'll notice we have knits and pearls alternating up the side. So it's gonna create our little selvage edge. 
And then we're going to purl five and start with the red symbol there. Now, if you're using a cable needle, you're just going to do exactly what the instructions tell you, slipping the first stitch to the cable needle and holding it to the back. But since I'm choosing not to use a cable needle for these little three over one over three or two over one cable maneuvers, I'll show you how I'm going to work it. I'm going to pretend I was going to slip this to the back and I'm going to go in in front of it and put my working needle in under those two stitches there pressing that first stitch to the base of this needle so I don't lose it when I slip the left needle out and then go right back in. So what I've done there is just maneuver that so I can pull this across the back, those other two stitches across the front, and replace them on the left needle so that I can work them by knitting these two. These would have been the next two that you knit and then the instructions would have told you to purl this one from the cable needle that you would have held to the back. Okay, so let's, I'll show you that one more, a couple more times along this row, but let's go ahead and look at the blue symbol since that occurs next, and that's just a two over one. Now you can also tell that's gonna happen. These are two knit stitches and this is a purl. So these two are gonna draw, be drawn to the left across that one purl stitch. So I'm gonna go in behind and come in on the bottom of that purl stitch, being careful not to go into the bottom of those two knit stitches right there. And then I'm gonna slip those two knit stitches off, pressing them firmly with my thumb against my right hand needle. And then I'm gonna come back with my left hand needle and put those right back on the left side, bringing the other one around behind. Now, that one was a purl stitch, but the instructions do not tell us to purl that. It says to knit that one, and then we're gonna knit the two that would have been on the cable needle held to the front. So we knit all three of those. And the reason that you also can verify that that's true is on that blue symbol, there is no dot indicating that there's a purl within that cable maneuver in the way that there is in the red symbol. So whenever you see a dot in a cable symbol, there's a purl involved. Okay, so now we're gonna purl a few in the middle. That's eight, I believe. Okay, we purl the eight in the middle and then we're gonna do that red maneuver again. So we're gonna hold this purl stitch to the back, go in the front and in underneath the next two stitches on the needle like that, pressing this purl stitch with my finger to the back of that needle. And then I can take my left working needle out and go in and recapture that put the next two stitches back on. So I'm just changing the order in which I'm going to work those. There we go. And then purl that one that was coming across the back. Okay, and we're gonna do the blue symbol again. We're gonna go in behind and come in under this purl stitch here, pressing those next two knit stitches to the right hand needle. Take my left needle out, bring it around and put that right in there into the next two knit stitches, replacing the purl stitch on there, but now I'm gonna knit that. Remember, there's not a purl stitch in the blue maneuver, the blue symbol. Okay, and again, keep repeating that. We're gonna knit, or sorry, purl those, I believe it's eight stitches in between, and carry on all the way across the row. So now that I've shown you how to do the red cable maneuver and the blue one, you're gonna continue that all the way, just doing those all the way through until we get to row 12. So I'll show you how to do that symbol when I get there. I'm on row 12 now and I've knitted through the first half of the chart and I'm to the pink cable symbol where we're slipping two, cable, two stitches to the cable needle and hold in the front. Or if you're not using a cable needle, you'll just want to take your right hand working needle behind the two that you would normally have slipped off and held to the front. Work that needle underneath the second set of two stitches, slipping everything off and pinching those two with your thumb to hold to the front. And then bring that left needle around and get a hold of them. So you, again, you're just reversing the order in which those two sets of stitches occur. We're gonna knit those next two stitches and then knit the two that we've brought across the front or the two off the cable needle if you're using one. So that's really very simple. It's just a two over two to the left. All right, and then we've just alternated knits and purls all the way across to the next cable. And you know that these four stitches are where that's gonna occur because you can plainly see in the pattern that this is where this is gonna cross and be the two over two to the left. So if you don't care to count the seed stitch in the center, 
There's really no need to if you're just paying attention and reading your knitting. All right, so we're just going to take our right hand needle again and go in underneath and behind and then go into that third and fourth stitch, pinching the first two to the base of the right hand needle while you slip out the left needle, come around to the front and grab a hold of those again, bringing those two stitches across the front and then just replace those off the right hand side and go ahead and work those four as knit stitches as indicated by the instructions. And then we're just going to carry on with our seed stitch across. Okay, so you can see how that's going to just be a left cross. All right, I'm on row 14 and just very quickly, I'm just going to show you that orange symbol, which as you guessed it, it has a purl stitch contained in it because of the dot you can tell. And that's going to be in keeping with our pattern here, the first two stitches are going to go across to the left and then this third one right here will become the purl. So what we're going to do is bring, go ahead and bring your yarn to the front and go in behind and underneath into that third stitch on the needle. Press those first two against your right hand needle and take them off. Bring your left needle around to pick them back up and then go ahead and replace this one on the left and now we already have our yarn in the front so we don't I don't take the needle out I just go ahead and purl that all right knit the next two as indicated in the pattern and you're just going to work a few seed stitches until we get over to that yellow symbol okay I've knitted my way over to the yellow symbol and if you're using a cable needle go ahead and slip the next stitch and hold that to the back but I'm not so I'm going to go in underneath and pretend I'm slipping this back off Go in underneath and grab the second and third stitch on the needle, pressing the first one, the base of the first stitch, to the bottom of the right hand needle. Remove the left needle and then go ahead and pick that back up again, bringing those two stitches across the front to the right. Go ahead and knit those. And actually we're gonna knit all three because that yellow symbol does not contain a pearl dot. So you know there's not gonna be a pearl stitch contained in this cable maneuver. I split that one a little bit, so I need to fix that. There we go. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, the uh, orange symbol again, which is, you can plainly see what's gonna happen here. These two stitches are just gonna continue to travel to the left. So I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front, go in underneath and get a hold of the third stitch, pressing the first two down so I don't lose them. Well, I take that left needle out and around and pick them back up. And I appear to have split that one a little bit. There we go. So then just go ahead and purl that one and knit the next two. Pretty straightforward this block is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just knit through the rest of this and uh, cut, finish the chart repeat a couple of times and we'll see what it looks like when I get about two thirds of the way through. Okay, I've knitted through two full chart repeats and I am about halfway through the third or last chart repeat, but I wanted to show you, I'm really pleased how this looks. It kind of reminds me of like a, a panel on an Aran sweater. It's, it's different and these look like bobbles, but they're not because you know, I don't like bobbles. <laughs> they're actually just, you know, a combination of knits and pearls. So that's, that's been neat to make that texture without having to make baubles. So I like that. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish uh, the last portion of that third, third time through the chart. I think we just go up to the last row, but not quite. So then we'll just, we're gonna finish this square off just as we have all the others by doing the garter rows here, the texture row five, and then four through nine, or sorry, six through nine are garter rows again garter stitch rows again, and then we'll just uh, do our bind off. We have to decrease and then do our bind off. All right, I finished the decrease row and I have indeed counted that I have 59 stitches left. So now all we need to do is repeat the first nine rows that we began with down here with the four rows of garter stitch. The fifth row has the texture, four more rows of garter, and then we'll just do our regular bind off. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes to show you what it looks like when it's done. See, I told you block 13 was super easy. There wasn't much going on with, that was terribly difficult with block 14 either, but I do like how it turned out to kind of look like an Aaron sweater panel. I really enjoyed that. So can you believe though that we are, 
what is that? 14 out of 20 blocks down, we are almost three fourths of the way there. So it isn't gonna be too long until we'll be sewing this thing together. All right, as always, I certainly appreciate your thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell for notifications so you don't miss anything, and I'll see you next time.